Hello, I'm Denmo, and this is how to make your own Final Fantasy XIV text bubble using DaVinci Resolve. Now, I have some test footage here of Final Fantasy XIV Limsa, and we're going to add some text bubbles to the characters here in the scene. First, I have to download and install the file. I have the zip folder saved here on my desktop. We're going to unzip that. Here's the text bubble settings, and I've also included the font family. You want to go ahead and install all of these. On Windows, at least, you should be able to install them just by double clicking and hitting install. I'm using Myriad because it's uh, pretty close to, it's not exact, but it's pretty close to what the Final Fantasy XIV font is. After that, make sure you have DaVinci open, and we're going to go to the Fusion tab right down here. Inside the Fusion tab, you'll see, you should see something like this, a media in node and a media out node. We're not going to worry about anything about that just yet. What I want you to go to is your effects tab up here. And we're going to go down to open up templates, open up edit and go to generators. We're going to right click on generators and click on show folder. And that should open up a folder. As you can see, I already got the uh, text bubble setting there. I'm going to delete that real quick. I'm going to find my chat bubble setting again. I'm going to copy that and paste it into the generators folder. And now it should show up in my effects tab. If I search for FXIV, it should show up right there. FXIV text bubble. We're going to go back to the edit page. In the edit page, I can go to the effects, search FX IV, go to generators, and in the generators, there's the text bubble right there. We're going to drag and drop it onto the scene. Now we have a text bubble. I can move it by clicking on this little icon here in the corner. And let's me move it in the scene. It starts off pretty big, so if you want to resize it, you can. And I can add it to any character I want just by placing it over them. And then from here, I go to the inspector tab can edit the text. I can make it multiple lines, as you can see, but I don't want to make it too many lines because it starts to clip. And just like in the real Final Fantasy 14, we try to keep the messages short and uh, single sentence. But what's neat about this is that the text bubble will resize to what you're needing it to do. I can also change the font to whatever I need it to be. I can change the color. I can change the size of the text, but be careful about doing this because it might start clipping. I can change tracking. I can change line spacing. I can also mess with the drop shadow, change the angle, change the shadow strength, however I like, change the blur on it, and you can edit the shadow color to whatever you like. Once, you're, once you've figured all that out, now it's in your scene. The only thing I didn't include with this setting is an intro and outro animation because Fusion is really particular about that, I found. So to make a simple intro and outro, I like to just add a, a quick fade in, fade out, and you can do that in the tab here. You see these little white tabs in the corners when you hover your mouse over. I'm just gonna click that, drag it in, and do the same on the other side. Click that, drag it in. And now we have a nice fade in, fade out. If you want to be particular, you can add a little uh, transformation. So if I go to effects, I hit transform, go to the open effects, resolve effects, add the transform, add that. And we're going to do a little push up effect so that as it fades in, it pushes up from below. So I'm going to I'm going to drag the playhead to about right here couple frames in right where the fade is finished and I'm going to make a keyframe on position Y by clicking this little diamond. I'm going to go back to the beginning of the clip. I'm going to bring the position down just a little bit and now when I play it back it'll come up. Now that was a little bit too much. Dial it back just a little bit. Maybe negative 0.015 and that's perfect. Of course, I can edit the keyframes as much as I need to. If I click on this right here, I can uh, move the keyframes around. I can add some smoothing to it by clicking on the in and out icons here. And just to make it look a little more Final Fantasy XIV accurate. But you don't have to. Okay, now let's say 
instead of just having the bubble show up like that, what if I want that bubble to follow a character, like this person running across the screen here? Okay, so I'm going to, first I'm going to chop up this section right here to where they're just on the screen. So I use the razor tool, cut right there, move the playhead forward to where I want it to be, maybe like right about there. Hit the razor tool again. So I have this clip and then I have my bubble. I'm gonna resize the bubble to where I want it to be. You wanna make sure you've done the intro and outro edits to this beforehand before you go into Fusion. I'm gonna select both. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna say new Fusion Clip. Once I have that Fusion Clip selected, I can go to the Fusion tab. And now it should look something like this. I have the background node and it's merging with Media 1, Media 2, and then Media Out. I have two views here in the Fusion page. Right now, uh, Media Out is defaulted to the second screen. So if I hit number two, it shows up there. I can hit number one to show different nodes. So if I select a node and hit one, it'll preview it on that side so I know which one is which. So you can see from here that Media 1 is the video file and Media 2 is the text bubble. I want that text bubble to follow Media 1. So what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to delete some of these nodes. I'm going to keep the background node for now. I'm going to go to Media 1 and hit 1 and we're going to add a tracker. Hit Shift and Space at the same time. Type in Tracker. Add that. I'm going to select my tracker and hit 1 again. So I'm previewing what the tracker sees. And notice how the tracker has this little box here. We're going to find our subject, which is this girl with the cap, and make sure that the crosshairs are selected over their head. I like to track their head, but you can really track any part that stands out if you want to. If you want to track their feet, you can. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but uh, I'm going to track their head. And then I go over here in the inspector tab with tracker still selected. I'm going to hit track forward. Give it a little bit of time and it'll track the girl all the way to the end of the clip. Now, it's made a bunch of keyframes tracking that motion, as you can see by these little white dashes at the top here. We're gonna scroll back to where the first keyframe was, and we're gonna track backwards to the beginning of the clip, track reverse. And once you've done that, you should have a smooth line, or relatively smooth, but a line that tracks the motion that you're after. So, how do we get the text bubble to match up with the tracker. With the tracker selected, we're gonna to go to the operation, change the operation to match move, and make sure the merge is foreground over background by default. And we're gonna to go to media two, which is our text bubble. We're gonna click on the little gray square on the text bubble, and we're going to match it up with the green triangle on the tracker node. And that will make the media two the foreground, over the background of Media 1, which is our video file. And now, as we move the playhead, nothing happens because we haven't merged it with a background. So, we're gonna take our background node, click that line off of Media Out. We're gonna take the background and merge it to the tracker by clicking on the gray squares and matching them up. It's going to create a merge node. We're going to take that merge node and merge it to the media out. And now, as we can see in the media out, the text bubble is following the tracker. Now, there's a problem here. The text bubble is not matched up to the character. So I'm going to go back to the media two node. We're going to add a transform node, shift space, type in transform, hit add. And we're going to use the transform controls to move the text bubble over our character's head. And there we go. That's it. If we go back to the edit page, you should see that it plays back as you'd expect. And that's all there is to it. If you have any other questions, leave a comment. I'll, I've also left some helpful links in the description and the readme file. I'm still learning DaVinci Resolve myself, and I consider this kind of a work in progress effect. So, so if it needs updating, I will update it in the 
description and in the comments. And of course, hopefully in the future, uh, Square Enix will finally release text bubbles officially for players to use so we won't have to do this workaround. But for now, I hope this is a useful addition to people's projects. Have fun and take care.